Hey, three, two, one. This is me, Magic Brad. I'm here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got Patrick Wanis on the line. Patrick, you there? Yes, sir. Are, are you down in Dallas also with Chris? I'm in Miami. Miami. He was a, oh, he's in Houston. You're on the East Coast. Perfect. How long have you been in Miami? Uh, about six years. So okay. I, I'm sort of between here and Los Angeles, but I also spend a lot of time in Houston because I have a lot of clients. Uh, and I also do a lot of workshops with many, many companies. And some of them are in Houston and Los Angeles and Miami. But mostly on the South. I'm up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Very nice. <laughs> so more chilly down up here. Are you married and got kids and all that kind of stuff? Uh, no, I didn't know that that's all that kind of stuff. I've got lots of other kinds of stuff. I've got the ocean in front of me. Does that count? Um, let me check. No, of course it counts. Everything counts, doesn't it? So Yeah, yeah, it does. So when I was talking with Chris, he had mentioned that you have some information about meditation. And, and I, I, this is my take on meditation. I've never really studied it in depth. But, and, and I do meditate. And to me, it's like wiping the slate clean. You get out of that whole cognitive left, right, uh, logic, emotion thing, and you get into a place of neutrality. And that way, other information can come in and it puts you in that peaceful place. So you're not thinking about the past or thinking about the, uh, the future. Well, the easiest way to meditate is simply to focus on your breath, just to, mm -hmm. to, to place yourself in a relatively comfortable seated position and to follow your breath in and follow your breath out so that all of your focus is on your breath. And then hopefully, eventually, the, um, you have two ways of meditating. You can meditate so that there are no thoughts, or you can meditate on one thought, and all you can do, as you said, which is to completely to focus on the attempt of clearing your mind so that you also have some insights coming to you. And is that one thought, is that like a mantra? You can do a mantra. You know, I like to use the sound OM, and the, even the actual use of the sound OM, it vibrates in your body. And if, when you are singing or when you're engaging in some sort of healthy vibration and meaning I'm not screaming and shouting and, and raising my blood pressure. When you are engaging in, in, in a positive mantra, you're actually also stimulating the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve is part of the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest state. That's the state where the opposite to the fight or flight response. So in this time of this uh, pandemic thing, there are a lot of people that are concerned about, uh, oh my God, I'm going to die. And other people are opposite of that. They say, let's just get out and do things. And then what that creates, and from what I've seen on social media, it creates this big battle back and forth, which can be stressful because someone's either saying, you're wrong and I'm right. Is, is meditation something that kind of will take care of that and kind of make a person? Well, I don't think, med to me, meditation isn't the panacea to everything. Meditation is an important component or important part of a total approach. And the total approach is, yes, you can meditate for half an hour or an hour, but you still have to, even, even if you take any of the monks, whether they're Hindu monks, Buddhist monks, all of the monks meditate for hours and hours, but then they go and study. What are they studying? They're studying philosophy, the philosophies of the way to live. So yes, you meditate, but then what are we, how are we Westerners going to study the philosophies of the way of living? And you can either follow their philosophies or you can do what, what I tend to do, which is look at the emotions and look at the thought patterns you have. So if someone is paranoid and someone's full of hate and they're protesting um, what, about whatever it is, that's one philosophy, one way of life. Someone else might be completely submissive and just give in and fall into hopelessness, helplessness and powerlessness. Then you might have someone who has the balance who says, these are the things I can control. These are the things I can't control. I'm going to focus on the things I can control. So um, I say review what are your beliefs because it's your beliefs that determine your emotions and then determine your actions and ultimately your results. The consequences are always, always go back to your original thoughts. Meditation helps you to lessen some of those crazy thoughts, but you still have to make a conscious effort to identify and recognize what are my thoughts and then change those thoughts as well as release any painful emotions. And then 
how does a person know if say they they had this if they made the wrong decision how do they know that it's the wrong decision how do you feel something like that well i think most of us know the decision's wrong when we have bad results i mean if you if you're if you're having a bad relationship with a husband or a wife or a partner or a business colleague then you know that you've made some that something in your response is also contributing to this outcome so i say life is lived inside out you want to know what's inside, look what's on the outside, what's happening in your exterior world. Yes, there are many things you can't control. The pandemic is a big part of it. But what about the things even before the pandemic? Always look at your relationships. Your relationships are a great reflection of who you are. Or are you a person that's experiencing extraordinary loneliness even before the pandemic? And are you experiencing more loneliness now? How are you, how are you dealing with that loneliness? Are you recognizing that you have the ability to make a difference in other people's lives. So if you start to feel significant in your the way you impact people's lives, you have less loneliness. If you feel that you belong to a group, you have less loneliness. If you feel you're understood, there's less loneliness. If you feel that you if you are actually opening up to other people and seeking to understand them, and then they want to also experience emotional intimacy with you, then you have less loneliness, you have more meaningful relationships. So again, if you want to know if you're making the right decision, just look at first and foremost, what are the results around you? And then I do want to address what you said, Brad, because it's, it's relevant. And that is, well, what about the feeling? If you're in a relationship and you're constantly feeling bad, whether that bad is tension or anxiety or fear or uh, stomach pains, or you're, you're tensing up your body, then there's something wrong or off balance in this relationship. So, You've got two ways. Number one, just look at your results. Number two, look at what's actually happening in your body. Where is your breath? What is your posture like? How do you feel when you're in this relationship? How do you feel when you're talking to Magic Brain? Do you feel good? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel that you can say anything you want? Do you feel you can open up? Do you feel transparent? Or do you feel like you've got to hide? Well, that doesn't mean that it's his fault. It also means well, what, how, how are you showing up to this? And why is it you feel you've got to stay shut down or you're afraid or you're unwilling to completely open up so on that um isn't like more on a spiritual realm of meditation isn't it uh, putting you at a place of uh, of calm so you're able to receive um higher information from a, a higher source kind of thing yes and there are many philosophies many theories many beliefs about well, what, what is that source of information is it mm -hmm. god is it the divine is it your higher self is your higher self part of god and the divine they're not questions that i try to answer because everyone will have their own perception their own belief if you choose to go into a meditative state and stay calm you have the opportunity to gain insights mm -hmm. but you've got to be able to let go of the preconceived notions that you might have and if you have thoughts that are coming across your mind you let them come across you don't react to them and that gives you the opportunity to receive more insight there is a part of us that does have a lot of knowledge that has a lot that has greater insights we usually don't tap into that and that might come back to your point about your feeling what is your gut feeling what was your gut feeling the first time you met person x because most likely that gut feeling was accurate but sometimes we say, well, I'll put that aside because person X could open this door for me and I could get a job or I could make money or I could meet this girl or meet this person. Right. So the more you choose to, to tap inside and connect to what am I feeling and the more you relax yourself, then yes, you can receive messages and insights. Because that's we what do I mean. Have you a get, lot to of that, messages. Yeah. get to that calm spot and then all of a sudden your brain kicks in and you start doing this logical analysis well, or something and that's based on your past that you're kind of using to analyze the situation that's true i think we've also got to recognize too brad because it sounds to me like you've been meditating for a while there are some people when they go to sit down and meditate they're not able to engage in what their perception of meditation is because they have too many racing thoughts so they can't get to that calm state that's why i say if you focus on your breath in you focus on your breath out you slow your breath down you breathe deeply, you breathe in and out gently, then there's a greater, you'll get better and better at achieving that calm state where you'll have less thoughts and you could have the opportunity to receive rather than constantly blurting out thoughts right. in your mind. Yeah, because the reason I brought that up was uh, if a per like you use the example of a relationship, a person could be in a bad relationship and then they end up thinking it's their fault and they feel worse because they, they did the bad thing to their spouse or whatever. 
and they start going down that rabbit hole of feeling bad, if they could get to that neutral space, they'd get some different information that's probably more accurate or better for well, I them. Think, I think that's true. I also still come back to the point that even, even the monks, whether they be Buddhist, Hindu, Tibetan, etc., yes, they meditate for hours and hours, but they also refer to philosophies. They have philosophies of ways of living. So I believe we still have to receive some knowledge because even if I'm calm and I go down that space of saying, well, why did I do this wrong thing in the relationship? Will I be able to get that insight of I'm human, I'm imperfect, I make mistakes? Will I be able to get to that place of forgiving myself? Will I be able to get to that place of having compassion for myself? Will I be able to get to that place of recognizing, well, my behavior is the result of many things that happened a long time ago and I need to change those beliefs. So my point is, you can get to that through meditation, but it's going to take you a long time. I think you've got to open up. You've got to be willing to receive insights, but also receive wisdom from other people. If you take something like the Vedanta, these are thousands of years of wisdom. I mean, they're, they're, it's a philosophy, it's a way of life, but there's also wisdom. Every, every religion, every spiritual practice has a foundation of philosophies. There's beliefs that they, that they live by. And I think they're also important. I don't, I don't, I guess what I'm saying is, and it's a very interesting point you've raised, is it possible to get everything just through meditation? Well, you can argue yes, because these people that had come up with these philosophies eventually originally came up with them through meditation. But how many decades of meditation did it take for them to get there? Mm -hmm. So then, aside from meditation, are there other things, uh, exercises or tools, if you will, that, uh, that you sort of blend in with uh, meditation? I think there are many tools. I believe that you've got to look at yourself as, as, as truly holistic. That means we, we have a body, we also have a mind, we have emotions, and all three are working together. So you, you deal with mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. The spiritual can also be service to others. Or it can be the meditation. It can be devotion or it can be worship. The, the mental is what thoughts do you have going on in your head? How are you feeding those thoughts? The emotion is... What do you feel? And it's connected to the thoughts because the thoughts determine what feelings we experience and what happens inside our body as a result of those emotions. The physical is, well, what am I feeding my body and how am I treating my body? So physically, and it also ties into meditation, you engage in deep breathing, you engage in, you do yoga, you engage in healthy eating, you engage in cardio exercise. All of those are important. And so I believe you've got to look at the whole person. And two other quick points, because I would like to share some strategies that I've got in my new audio book, Neutralize the Seven Emotions That Are Holding You Hostage, which I'm offering to your audience for free. Mm -hmm. There's extraordinary clinical trials that have been going on for quite a few years on psilocybin and MDMA. And psilocybin primarily opens your mind to hear a lot of those messages that you've been talking about. Psilocybin gets you to that place a lot faster than meditation does, but they're the same state. They're just two different ways of getting there. Now, of course, psilocybin isn't legal, except potentially it's been delegalized, I think in Colorado and perhaps Oregon's gonna be next. But in clinical trials, they've been finding that this is helping people with PTSD, with depression, and even with terminal illness. So interestingly, just as a side note on, on both psilocybin and MDMA, psilocybin, which comes from, from magic mushrooms, Psilocybin opens your mind, MDMA opens your heart. You put those two together, you're changing the way you think and feel and perceive yourself and the world around you, including all the people around you. In terms of other strategies, in, my, in the book I just referenced, Neutralize the Seven Emotions That Are Holding You Hostage, I identify the seven primary umbrella of emotions we're all experiencing right now as a result of the pandemic, fear and um, fear and anxiety, sadness, sorrow, and grief, victimhood, powerlessness, helplessness, hopelessness, um, loneliness, guilt and shame, anger and aggression and rage, and also depression, rumination. So you, but all of those are connected to our thoughts. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the things you can control or are you wasting your energy on the things you can't control? And can you tell the difference between the things you can control and the things you can't control. So I think you, you've got to look at what thoughts are you feeding? What food are you putting on, putting inside your body? How are you breathing? You're breathing deeply because we, we are an extraordinary um, being 
and we have greater control over ourselves than we realize. Most of us think we're victims to either just our thoughts or our emotions or the external world, but we're constantly interacting with our thoughts, our emotions and the world around us. And we have the opportunity to change those thoughts. And as you have said m many times, to tap into insight. Because I do this work myself and I do it through meditation and I do it through deep breathing, looking for those insights of what do I need to let go of? What are the thoughts that work against me rather than for me? How am I creating fear, anxiety, sadness, sorrow, grief, loneliness, anger, rage, guilt, or shame? How am I creating those? And I'm always creating them with judgments, expect, expectations I have about myself, about you, about the world around me the musts, the oughts, the shoulds. So I, I don't think many of us recognize how powerful our thoughts are in impacting our physical body and our emotional body. Yeah, the thing about thoughts are things, right? Say that again? Thoughts are things. And they, they really are because if you have fearful thoughts, you start to change your physiology, you start right. to change the chemistry in your body. Now it becomes a thing. We, you can't experience anxiety if you don't have the fearful thoughts. And if your physiology is that I'm anxious and I'm breathing up here, I can slow that down by deeping, deeping, breathing in deeply, slowly, and gently. So I can adjust that state physiologically. I can also look at the thoughts and say, well, why am I experiencing anxiety? I feel or believe my world is out of control and I'm trying to control things of which I have no control. If I'm constantly trying to change you, I'm going to be full of frustration, anger, bitterness, resentment, and most likely anxiety because I can't change you. So here's the big question. How do you get a hold of the ebook? <laughs> so it's free. And um, because of the work I've been doing with another person you interviewed, Chris Burris, if you go to his website, myvitalc.com slash magic brad i'm offering you two products one which you'll really love even more than the audiobook is a guided meditation so there's the audiobook which is about an hour and 15 minutes um it talks about the seven emotions i give you action steps on those emotions and then there's a, a final long section on other transformational exercises and then there's the guided meditation that's 20 minutes so if you're a person that struggles with meditation because you you're thoughts race you can just go with this guided meditation it begins with slow gentle breathing some visualization then i take you through this journey where you're experiencing these various symbols and imagery and there's also positive suggestions in it so it's very relaxing and calming but it also gives you um, empowering suggestions so that's myvitalc.com slash magic brad that's chris's website if you want to Learn more about what I do. If you want to book a one-on-one -on -one session, you can go to my website, patrickwannis.com. But you can only get the audio book and the guided meditation for free at myvitalc.com slash magicbrad. I'll put those links in this. What I do with this is beam it up to the universe and then take the video and put it on different blogs and propagate it out to social sure. media. So I will uh, put those in that blog, put those links in there for you and Chris. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, Patrick, I appreciate you taking the time. This has been very insightful and I think it's very timely with all this uh, craziness with this Corona thing going on. People got to chill out, right? Yeah. Well, again, recognize what can you control and what can't you control? That comes from Stoic philosophy and it, it's even connects to Buddhism and it's almost all of the religions teach the same thing. This foundational principle, Stoicism wasn't religion, but it was a philosophy, which is, Put all your energy in what you can control. It became known as the Serenity Prayer in 1951. I was just going to say but, it's in Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> right. But the Serenity Prayer, from which began in 1951, is the actual principles of Stoicism, the philosophy, the, 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 uh, the Roman, the Romantic philosophy. And that philosophy also comes from Buddhism because Buddhists teach you let go of attachments. Don't become attached to things. They're all, right. they're all interlapping and overlapping. Yeah, it just makes sense. There's no point in... Uh working at something you can't control, right? Correct. <laughs> Stress you out. Okay, yes. Patrick, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to beam this up to the universe. Enjoy. Peace, love, and happiness. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, and namaste. Everybody.